to Airports Company South Africa's Women in Aviation series, where we feature prominent pioneering women in the aviation space. And today I have the honor and the privilege of being in conversation with Zanele Sibia. Hi, um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Zanele Sibia, and I am a treasury practitioner at Airports Company South Africa. Wonderful. So tell us your story. You have years in the aviation space. How did it all begin? Sure, uh, I, I can say, um, okay, it's so many years. So this is how it began. My story is a, it's a bit long because it's so many years that a lot of things have happened. Yeah. But then, um, just to cut it short, but just to make it clear. So I've been with Airports Company South Africa since 2003. I was still in primary school. I was in grade seven. So what happened is that um, I'm from Tembisa, born in Tembisa, and I was in primary school in Tembisa. So what happened is that um, I think airports companies South Africa sent a request to say um, from those that are from disadvantaged um, backgrounds or primary schools um, can they just uh, select about two top learners per school primary school and I was one of them so the, it was uh, there's so many schools because I think we filled two buses actually wow. so um, we were selected and we were asked to you know to go write an aptitude test and they said that whoever that passes the test is gonna continue with airports company, meaning that um, airports company South Africa is gonna be funding uh, the students, you know, high school education, and then from there they will they will see how the uh, the, the, the learners are performing. So that's what happened. So with me, I was um, I, we went and we wrote the aptitude test, and I was part of the top five. And from there, airports company decided that you know. Um, you're doing good, so we're gonna start funding you from high school. So that's how far I've come with Airports Company. And from there, it was high school, they funded everything. It was an academic school. It was back then, it was called Rao Core. It was, it was, it was in association with the Rao University. Mm. And then, um, yes, it was Rao Core um, High School. So I did well there from grade eight until matric. And then Airports Company came back to say, you know, you're doing great um, with the five, with the other five learners, they said, we're gonna fi fund your varsity. You can choose any varsity that you want in South Africa, and then you can do any course. So I was very much interested in finance, but more on the economic side. So I selected that I wanna go to University of Johannesburg, and I did my BCom Economics and Econometrics there. So that's how it started. And then from university, I got employed by AXA, to different spaces, um, you know, from being an intern to being a treasury practitioner. So I started working for AXAM when I completed my degree. I completed 2010, um, three years um, after my high school, and then I started 2011A here at Airports Company, even though I used to come, mm -hmm. you know, because um, they were so interested in us to, 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 to have an idea of what is happening in the aviation space. During, um, a, uh, like, um, a, what is it, break, um, varsity breaks so they will make us come here do vacation work mm. so we'll come to the airport they will take us through to different departments so I've been to a lot of departments SEM accounts receivable accounts payable so it was so much exposure that I felt that this is you know this is home this is where I want to be I think you're being very modest to Zanele because you know I find your story very fascinating you you went into an aviation space which is predominantly dominated by men and was for a very long time. I think things are changing in that area. But also finance, which is another sort of predominantly male space. Um, talk to us about that. How yes. did you manage, how did you navigate being a woman in male-dominated spaces? Well, you know, uh, there's something different about AXA though, you know? because what happens is that, okay, when I remember, if you can go to finance, there's lots of women surprisingly at AXA mm. um, okay well there's lots of uh, uh, women there but obviously I think to a certain position you know uh, I've noticed that obviously when you uh, the more you go higher the positions obviously now there's males they involved most of the women are in the you know like administration and everything because obviously probably they're good at that but then with AXA I saw it a bit different because when I got here um, which was uh, the, the, the CFO was a woman when, actually, when I was doing vacation, it was a woman. And I was inspired because I was like, you know what? If a woman in finance is a CFO, clearly, and here at AXA, I can actually see myself getting there one day. Mm -hmm. You know, because I've seen that even though, you know, the, the roles will change. And then when 
uh, that when she left, I think a male came came through. But then still, I could, I still have that hope that you know what. It doesn't mean that when you're a woman at AXA, you're not going to make it to the top because I've seen it happen. Mm -hmm. So challenges were there, but finance, I must say, finance is not as like being in the aviation where probably you are a pilot, you know, it's different because with finance is more women. Even now you can check in our team, um, our, okay, our, our senior manager is, is male, but um, I think three, three of us, my colleagues, it's just female. So mm -hmm. it's a group of four, a team of four, but then only one male is there. And when you, because I really want to get a sense of, of, of how internally you dealt with certain challenges. What, what was the kind of internal dialogue that you would have with yourself when encountering challenges to say, Zanel, okay, um, we're, we're here now, you know, and moving forward, and, and, and going backwards, moving forward, it's not an option, we have to keep going. What are the things that keep you going, that, that inspire you to keep going? Well, there's a lot of things that keeps me going. I think, what I can say though is that, I think with COVID, there's been a lot of changes, mm -hmm. you know? Because um, when I think about it, pre-COVID, I think I was this one person that was so, I could see like um, climbing the ladder so fast, especially in the treasury space because i'm in finance but in the treasury so finance is quite broad there's those that do deals with um financial statements and everything i'm not in that area i'm in the treasury where we actually deal with the with with the finances the cash the actual cash of a company we invest we negotiate we do the forex that's where i am and that's what basically i've started a I've tough studied. job a very during tough COVID. job so during COVID, um also we were under a lot of pressure but also I saw myself, you know, learning a lot during that space. But then also in treasury, you get to network a lot because relationships are very important. Mm -hmm. So obviously when you do investments, when you negotiate rates, you have to meet these people like your banks and other financial students. You have to meet them face to face. But things took a turn on my side because now you'll be dealing with someone that you've never seen. So obviously it's not the same mm -hmm. in the industry. So I can say that that was some of the challenges that came through um, during the COVID. I can say COVID has changed the way I would view um, myself because I think pre -COVID, if COVID didn't come, probably I could have been, you know, I could have climbed that career, um, career ladder much faster than I thought. But career, um, what is it, COVID had to slow down things a bit. So yeah. I and hope bring I things, yeah, and yeah. bring things into perspective a yes, little bit. Yeah. yeah, no, completely. Well, earlier we were talking about how you're a mom of uh, a toddler and a baby, married. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, That's it a is, lot. It is. It is. It is. <laughs> um, we don't talk about this enough, I think, as women. Maybe because in the past we were made to feel ashamed of. Mm -hmm our domestic responsibilities, the fact yes. that we have people at home who rely on us. Yes. And, you know, you have all kinds of stories of women being, you know, having to bring their children to work mm -hmm. because they couldn't find anyone to, to help, you know. Um, how have you managed that that balance, that work-life balance? Yeah, it's not easy, I must say. It's not easy. Um, because, um, obviously, you know, your kids, children, they want attention and Sometimes not like um, they're just doing it on purpose. They just want you to be there for them, mm -hmm. you know, and especially that I have a one year old now. So obviously with AXA, we obviously can work from, it's hybrid, we can work from home. So when I'm home, you know, I would obviously move away from, you know, where she is and then try to work with, but then, you know, as soon as I'm done on when I'm taking a break, the very the first thing that I want to do is just to see her because the old one goes to school. Yeah. It's just to see her. But then sometimes it happens that probably maybe that one day I do not have someone to help me and I've got a meeting. Mm. You know, I'll have to make a plan. I'll have to quick, uh, quickly think to say I cannot distract the meeting. How can I do this? I must, must carry the baby. And now I'm on the meeting, you know, make sure that she doesn't make noise. And then I listen and then you'll find that probably she's fussy, she wants this. But then for, for some reason, it does work out, you know, it does work out because I will still have um, a good meeting while I have a baby that I'm nursing, probably breastfeeding or, you know, 
uh, bottle feeding, I'll do something, you know, just to make sure that the baby's fine. And also uh, my work is not suffering. And also, as I was saying to you that I want to study as well, but then with the kids, it's quite, I'm still thinking about it to say, okay, with the kids, with work at the same time, how am I going to do? And I'm also married, obviously. There's so many duties that you have to do at home. You have to make sure that everyone eats. So it's quite challenging to be a working mom, especially if you're not just comfortable at your position where you are. You want to see yourself um, um, going, you know what, going to better leadership positions, you know. And also, you know, I'm also one person that is very active in the community. So you can imagine, I want to do all those things, but also my family, I need to prioritize them. So it's quite challenging, but it is doable. Your story reminds me of that Alicia Keys song, Superwoman. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Quite literally, doing it all. Doing it all. Yeah, doing it all. And sometimes, you know what, you don't realize when you're busy doing, when you're busy doing this and this and that, until you sit down like, did I really do all of that like today? Just so put yourself on the back now and then. Mm, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I think it's incredible and, and it's inspiring because it's it's the reality. It's the reality of so many working mothers mm -hmm. and their stories are often not told mm -hmm. of just exactly what they go through to make sure that food is on the table, the kids are taken care of, yeah. work is taken care of, exactly. you know, the house is taken care of and all of those mm. things. Um, what's your message to young women? You know, um, when we look at the aviation space, I think we, from the outside mm -hmm. looking in, mm -hmm. you see the pilots, you know, and it looks like it's a very male dominated, male driven space. But, mm -hmm. you know, our own company is headed by a, a woman. We've got several other aviation exactly. entities in the country that are headed by women. Um, things are changing. Mm -hmm. the, the, the environment is becoming more and more inclusive. Yeah. So now is the time for young women to be as ambitious as they want to be. Yeah. What's your message to them? Okay, my message, um, I can say, obviously if they've listened to the, the, of this message, they would know that it's not like I come from a background where you no, know, everything was just there on a civil platter. Mm. But then what I can say is that um, it doesn't matter what background you're coming from, but what's important is where you're going. Mm. If you have a vision, if you have written down your vision and you know where you're going, you will get there because every time you read your vision to say, this is what, this is what I want, this is where I see myself, you know. Sometimes you, you cannot obviously write exactly that I want to be at the aviation space, you know, um, uh, with, with airports company. You know, you can be with another company, but the fact that you said you want to be in the aviation space, you will get there mm -hmm. because you, you, you will make sure that you do things that will take you there. So to a young woman out there is that don't give up, you know. Also, even if you already have kids, because I know a lot of people that get discouraged as the moment that they have kids, you find that they have three kids and they feel like, you know what, I just need to take care of my kids. I cannot work. It's doable, you know, you know, because sometimes, um, you will say you want to do these things for the kids and you stop your life. When they have grown and they now start living their life, you'll feel like, yo, why did I stop my life? Why didn't I just continue, you know? Um, we are not saying that you just uh, forget about them, do like do you only. But then also don't forget about yourself because you find women now being depressed to say, you know, these kids, they've messed up my life. Before I had kids, I could have been this far. Mm -hmm. It's not that um, when you have kids, uh, you must cancel your dreams. I'm sure your kids will be happy when you say, I had you probably um, maybe at a young age, but look at me today. Mm. I made sure that I still um, reach my goals because kids are not the reason to, you know, to, to, to stop dreaming or getting where you want to, to go to. And also, you know, even that male dominated space, don't be scared to get on it, you know. Trying is the best because sometimes you know that, you know what, this one I know definitely is not for women. But just do it as long as you want it, as long as you want it and you are determined to say, I'm going to get there, just do it. And you will see yourself, you will thank yourself because if you're passionate about something, I believe that when you fail, that passion, you know, that, uh, that thing that will just say to you, remember you love this, it, it is the same thing that's going to make you to continue and do what you want and make sure that when you fall, you get up again. Thank you so much for your time and sharing your story with us.